nickel. There we go, and here we go. We're on. Awesome. And, and, We're getting the notification right now too. Oh, good. Tell me if my camera is good. I, that's my. I never know if it should be vertical or horizontal. Hi guys. Thanks for joining, Miss Hill Dyer. Everybody. Thanks for joining, Miss Hill Dyer. Yeah, Oh, oh, got to turn that off. I did, yeah. Is that okay on the vertical? Call a faux pas. Is that good? Can you can you uh, see me yeah, uh, vertically? Fine. Can you guys on Periscope? Hey, I'm talking with Ryan Nickel, guy, and he's got a real interesting story. And um, I just thought real quick to share it with you guys because this is how we learn. This is how I learn. And Ryan, you had the sales call from hell. I did. I definitely did. Tell everybody, share everybody your pain. And what, so, so they learn what never, ever to do. <laughs> so um, I, I looked this guy up because the house is like worth two fifty, and he, owned, he only owned 45000 So I was thinking, you know, cha-ching, payday, just like every other investor out in town here. And so I called him up. He didn't answer. And then I'm on my way back from a date with my wife. Nice, nice date. You know, we went and had a great time. And I said, you know what, honey, let me call this guy. I have the prompting to call him because I, I couldn't get a hold of him earlier. And I was thinking what a 30-second conversation would have been to set an appointment for the next day. No, it turned into three and a half hours. I'm call, talking to this guy. That's longer than your date with your wife, man. When I finally hung up with the guy, my wife put a note on the countertop saying, I'm upset that you chose him over your family because she put the kids to bed and she went to bed. And it was, it was, it was bad. Woo, the guilt, the guilt thing. Yeah, I was raised. My mother raised me on guilt. Oh gosh, it, it sucked. And she so now, but he's called me three or four times, and she goes, "Don't talk to the guy." <laughs> Someone just said the house is on fire. I gotta go. <laughs> I tried. Like I'm like my wife told me that you know I'm gonna be on the couch tonight. I gotta go. And I you know what? It, it comes down to me not respecting my boundaries and myself, and just saying, "Look, man, you know what? This is what we're gonna do with the house. Either you're gonna let me work with you or not." And it, every time I tried to tie him down, he would get farther and further and further away. And it just was so frustrating because, one, I wanted to win. And then, two, I, I just I couldn't. I, I just I was struggling. I, you usually have to ask questions that get right to the point. Um, I will, You know, this three-minute timer, you know, it's an exaggeration. But sometimes you can get an idea of whether or not you can work with somebody in the first 180 seconds. Sometimes it takes 5, 10, 15 minutes, of course. But in my mind, I always have a little pad or, or my famous uh, Walmart book, and I write notes. And one of the things I'll say to people is, why are we talking today? Mr. Mr. Nickel, could you tell me how we're going to do business today? And then they do this, what we call an obfuscation. They go on these tangents in all different places, and they tell you about their hemorrhoids or, or their gout or, or their or whatever, you know? And, and that's exactly what this was. It was ridiculous. I, mean, I, I learned more about this guy's whole life history in three hours than I ever wanted to know or needed to know. Now, you promise, uh, what I say next, you promise you won't get mad at me? No, go for it. Okay, people get mad at me. They really, you know, so don't take it personally. It, it, this was your fault, wasn't it? It totally was my fault, and that's what I'm most upset about. What could you? Three hours, my God, three hours. They think so of in all. My that, mind, I'm thinking like <laughs> he wants me to be here. He wants to do business with friends only, and so I'm way over here. I'm not a friend, so I'm like, oh, I'll talk to this guy. I talk to this guy, and we get to the point. And he's like, well, thanks for talking with me tonight. It's been a pleasure. You should really check out my radio show in the morning. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. You know what? You know, I'm going to say the worst thing I'm, I, I, I ever say to a, to my clients or anything. Yes. So don't take it personally. You're in, you're one you're one of those kind of guys, aren't you? <laughs> you no, and you're you're one of those nice people, aren't you? Yeah. You're a nice guy, aren't you? So my bank account is showing nice guys finish last, right? Well, it's no, I'm a nice guy too. I'm a I'm a cream puff. I'm a I, I mean I help old ladies across the street. I, I you know I, I I'm like that. But when it comes to business, your family, you come first. I'm the only guy in the world. I don't think Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, or any of the other gurus out there say that the salesman. The investor comes first. And that's not because I'm a bully or uh, I'm trying to uh, pressure anybody. I just want to know that I'm working really smart. And right. so you're so nice. You're, see, your mother's in your head yelling at you every day. My mom's been got, uh, gone over 20 years, rest her soul. She yells at me every day. 
You know, I mean, it's amazing. If I don't hold, if I don't hold, a, pick up a piece of garbage off the floor, or I don't hold a, open a door for an old lady or a helper or something, my mother yells at me from the grave. So I'm a nice guy too. Okay, uh, we'll be seeing him here in a couple of weeks. Mike buys. Anyway, um, this message is going on here in Periscope. Here's the thing. You can be a nice guy. You can be polite. But you have to be very direct. You do have to be assertive. And you can't let them obfuscate. You've got to get you got to get to. Hey, Mr. Prospect, this is really interesting. And I love hearing your life story. But I got to I've got to leave in about 90 seconds. And I'd like to do business with you this evening before I go. Is there a way we can do business? Is, are you in the mood to do a contract tonight? I'll send it to you tomorrow. We can get on Skype or Periscope or Facebook Messenger and we can and we can consummate this deal. Do you want to do business with me today? You just wait for them to say what they're going to say, right? You're not allowed to say tell me you'll think about it. You know what? Um, let me think about it. You're you not allowed to, to sir. You're well, not allowed to think about it. And I'm not doing that to anger you or anything. I just, bottom line, when people say that to me, they're worried about my feelings. I'm here for you, sir. I want to do business. But if you're not comfortable, let's just say we're done. It's finished. Kaput. I okay. just have nowhere to go, and I just don't want you to take advantage of it. Well, if you think I'm going to take advantage of you, then you probably don't trust me or even like me, and you shouldn't do business with people like that. Is there anything else we should? Uh, is there anything else I should say or do before I get off the phone, sir? No, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go. Well, tell me how we. I want to do business with you. Tell me how we're going to do it right now before I go. I got 60 seconds left. If I give you the price, you owe on how much do you owe on your property? Forty-seven thousand. And what's the value of it? Well, taxes ta tax me for one hundred eighty-eight thousand. Okay, what do you need in order to make you happy today? Hundred. Okay, so if I give you a hundred thousand and pay off the first mortgage, can we do business today? If I get you a contract, we could. What? Yes. I'll send you a contract. Let's have a Skype meeting tomorrow morning at 1030, and we'll figure out the finer points. Is that all right with you, sir? Yeah. Thank you. You've been very patient with me. You're a gentleman. I've got the information. I'm going to spend a little time doing some homework. I'll get that to you, and we'll talk tomorrow. Have a nice evening. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We have to, and I have to, I have to remove, I have to block somebody here, and that's good. He's gone. And here's another one. Oh my gosh, somebody, my wife, it's okay. We, we just blocked a few people, they're gone. It's so easy to do. They say something stupid, you just hit the button, you block them, they're gone, they're gone. forever. Right. It's so easy. You wonder why, they, you, you feel almost sorry for them. They have nothing better to do, except wait, just go to the, go to the mailbox and wait for the SSI check. <laughs> anyway, we learned a lesson here. It's all about you. You have to you have to get to the point. You have to stay in control. You have to nurture and stroke them a little a little. But eventually And I stroke too much. That was the thing, man. Well, you know, the thing about it is we we most people make so many phone calls. And when they finally get someone who res who talks to them on the phone and say, Oh my god, I finally got one. You know, we don't, they don't want to get off the phone. You right. don't want to get off the phone with us. I finally got someone who's talking to me. Whereas my thing is to call people up and, you know, hi, Mr. Nickel, why am I calling you? Mr. Nickel, I got your number in front of me. Uh, why can I, how can I help you? Uh, Mr. Nickel, you have a problem, sir. You've been trying to sell your home for two years now. I think we could do business today. Should we talk about that or should I get out of here real fast? Boom, right to it. Move real fast. That's great. You know, um, it's yeah. So, it, it, so here's my question then. So, I've already set the precedent for the relationship by spending this, you know, it, <laughs> my you, life. You know. You're you're in it. You stepped in doo doo, man. He thinks you're. He's a lonely guy. He wants to talk with it's, you. He's called me back twice now, and I've talked to him two two hours each time. Call me up like him. Let's do a role play here. I'm one of my. I love role plays. This is how you learn. Role play all day long. All right. So who am I? Am I him or you? Him? You're him. Call him. And it's, this is the third phone call? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Diamond Consulting Group. This is Claude. How may I help you? Hey, Claude. This is Ryan. I just wanted to say hi. You know what? I just I feel such a kinship with you, and I'm glad that you answered. Um, 
I just, you know, you're such a, you're such a great person. You have such a. Oh, you know, good. Tell my wife, sir. Hey, Mr. Nickel, I'm really busy. We've spoke. This is the third time we've spoken. Normally, I usually do business in the first or second phone call. Third time is a charm. Okay. Can we do business today? Well, that's why I was calling you. I actually need to. Get what are your terms? Out. What would you like to see happen, sir? What will make you happy today? Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking for. You know, if someone will just give me, uh, you know, an extra fifteen thousand dollars. If I gave you a contract today with an extra fifteen thousand dollars, what would you say to me next? Uh, can I, can I, you know, pay you back and stay in this house for until I? No, you sell it, you're gone, sir. Your history. Well, I, I, I don't know where to go. Okay, well, you got it. That's a problem you got to solve. When you do, would you call me back? Because I'd love to do business with you. I am so busy. I'm doing so many different deals, and I just don't have the luxury of. of of another long conversation with you as much as I like you. So if you think we can do business today, would you call me back? I, I would. I like you. Have a, a nice day, sir. Perfect. Um, it's a little New York. It's a little psychology. Um, it's a little putting such a value on Listen, listen, I had a guy once. I was on the middle of a deal. We were almost there. We were this close, okay? And I was on the phone. This was in California. And my son, David, was real small. You know, you got how many kids do you have? Four. You have four kids. Do they ever go potty while you're on the phone? Oh, my gosh. Dad, I went poop. I'm like, where is my wife? Uh, anyway, yeah. I'm on the phone. I'm going to make a lot of money on this deal. I am this close with the guy, okay? And uh, all of a sudden, my kid yells down the hall. He says, Dad, he says, Dad, I need someone to help me wipe my butt. You know, you got kids. And, right, right, and yeah. so I go to the guy. Hey, listen, I got to help my son. He, and he said, hey, Claude, we're almost finished with the deal. And I said, I'm sorry. Sometimes you get a little behind in your work. Ta -da. <laughs> I'm sorry. For those of you watching on Periscope, I, it was just too easy. I couldn't avoid. I couldn't stop myself. But the thing about it is you got to you have to what's the difference between a millionaire and and everyone else? Does a millionaire have more uh, 25 hours in a day? Yeah, or, that's how they value their time, because their time is worth so much more per hour, per second, per minute. That's the thing. The value of the time. Do, are you working smarter? You know, if you want to make twelve dollars an hour, become a barista or a Walmart greeter. If you want to make a hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars an hour, you have to say that I ha I offer people something of value. I am their doctor. I am their lawyer. I can solve their problem today. But you got to put yourself first because sales, gut sales, is really about the salesman coming first. Because you've worked hard, you've studied hard, you give great customer service, you are a decent, honest, hardworking guy who just wants to take care of your family. You're entitled, okay? You deserve to get a lot of money, okay? And if people want to waste your time or don't see the value in what you're doing, time to go to another person or another one. Someone out there, there's billions of dollars of real estate transactions that occur every year. Um, in where, where do you live again? What city is it? Uh, I'm north of Sacramento. North of Sacramento. How many thousands of homes are, tran are transacted in Sacramento or in your county right now? A month. 5,000, 10,000. No, it's about, it's about 4,500. Okay, that was close, 5,000. Okay, yeah. out of that 5,000, somebody wants to work with somebody like you, but they don't know about you. You're a secret. Or when you do talk to them, you sound exactly... You sound, you're like another tissue out of the box. You sound like the other people. So you got to make yourself real unique. You've got to get your commitment early. What is, and reverse engineer the whole attention. What does that prospect really want? What does that prospect want who's buying or selling a home? What are they looking for? What would you be looking for if you were in their position? If I was the seller, I mean, I'd be looking just, I would. You want someone who's going to take care of you who's knowledgeable, who gets back to you, who has a, if you need a house quickly. I, it's mostly about trust. Like, I, trust. I, don't know, I mean, there's a lot, there are a lot of guys that have money. There's a lot of guys that know how to do the business, but I don't trust them in my market, man. This whole business is so much about sales. Okay, I know everybody talks about all the different things, the, the systems and, and all the different stuff. 
This business is about sales, about persuasion, about influencing people, about getting the commitment, knowing how, you basically have to learn how to read minds. And if you can't read minds, you have to figure out what's that prospect really want? What are they thinking? You've got to qualify them so fast and really get to it while you're stroking, you're nurturing them all the time. Because the millionaire can make as much money as they want because they put such a value on their time and they realize the value of the service they offer. The guy who's str or the girl who's struggling and struggling and making these, oh, these, these torturous phone calls. And I'm only saying this because I'm the former world's worst sales guy. Man, I would do anything. I'll clean toilets before I make cold calls. Person says to me, oh, I love cold calls. That person's on drugs, man. They should move to Colorado where I am right now, okay? <laughs> Because cold calling under the old-fashioned system is gruesome. It's horrible. It's the worst ever. So we've got to make sales fun. I have fun on the phone all day long. I talk to great people. I have fun. I, I'd say 75% there's nothing there. Ain't going right. to make any money. But that 25%, man, that can be very lucrative. You it can, can be. be. So, I mean, like... To kind of, you know, to tie a bow on this one, bring it full circle. So he's called me, like I said, two times already. So the last time he called me, um, I basically just let him just talk and talk and talk and talk. And I had some, um, I'm, I'm, I had some letters I had. Like to you let me just now, right? <laughs> 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 I got on a soapbox. I'm sorry. I get very emotional about this stuff. Yeah. So anyway, I let him talk for an hour. And I was just filling out envelopes that I'm, I'm doing some um, probate mailing to. And so I, I finished my probate stuff, and I go, well, hey, you know what? It's been really nice talking to you. I actually got to go. I have an extra appointment right now. So this is what I'm you know, put on speakerphone and just started writing. And he, and it was because this is what I found out, and I learned this from you, though, is you know you want to you want to ask the reverse psychology question to get them to go the opposite direction. And every time I did that, he would go farther and further and further, which is why it was three-hour conversation. Tell so, him if he could answer yes or no. Could you, Mr. Prospect, could you just answer this next question, yes or no? Do you want to do business with me today? If I sent you a contract uh, for 10000 down, 1000 a month, principal-only payments for 36 months, and I gave you your asking price, could we do business today? And the yes or no, right. Yes or no, sir, please. Well, so, you know, I actually I did something even a little bit different than that, though. It's like I, I completely ignored his problem. I said, well, hey, you know what? I got to go. And he goes, wait, 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 wait. We haven't talked about my situation. Yes, we have, sir. I think, it, I I think we're done. There's another thing called firing the prospect. You are the doctor, the lawyer, the accountant. You're the professional. You've got to be the guy in charge. You've got to, you, you've got to make... You've got to be a little bit of, I know we all want win-win, but as long as you win first, right? We talked That's about, right, yeah. you know, and, and the thing about it is you've got to be the, you don't want a doctor who says, well, maybe, maybe this operation will work, Mr. Nichols. I, you know, I don't know. You know. I'll give it my best. Or do you want a guy who says, not to worry. I've studied this. I've seen this. I've done this operation a million times before. You're in good hands. We're going to take great care of you. You're going to be good as new when we're done with you. Sign here. <laughs> they, that's that's what actually what happened was is because I ignored his problem, he got so desperate and upset that I wasn't helping his problem that I actually we got in the con we're going uh, so to sign the contract today. Uh, so you are signing a contract today at uh, two thirty. Okay, so really maybe maybe I'm wrong and you're right. Maybe your judgment call was to be patient and hang in there with him, and maybe you maybe you did it the right way. You know, it's all second guessing. You know, it was frustrating though, but you know, but this is what I know, but I guess it goes back to what I learned from you though, is I was trying to, to do the question, so finally I just ignored his problem completely until he got upset that I wasn't addressing his problem. Because he wanted to avoid it when I brought it up, but when he brought it up, it was important. He, do you feel he trusts you now? There's likability and trust? He's been sending me stuff, he wants me to be like, if he had a will, I'd be on his will, I can tell you that. Okay, so you're in there, you got it, and you're getting in the contract today? Yeah. You're going over to his house? Yep. Are you, did you set an agenda ahead of time? I did, and it's all been timed. Because you, you might be there until Saturday if you don't. Right, yeah. No, he go, I, <laughs> Honey, I'm staying overnight. You know? He talks me a little bit. He goes, he goes, oh, you got a wife. Oh, you got the kids. Oh, you got the gym. Oh, you got this stuff. And I'm like, I'm a busy man, and if I'm going to get this done, it has to fit within this time frame or else I can't get it Take done Take pictures of your wife and kids. 
Say, here's oh. little here's little Bobby, here's little Susie, and they're going to Taekwondo. I got to pick them up. Uh, so, you know, uh, I didn't, can we just get right to it, sir? Because uh, I want to get working on this tonight, do a marketing plan, whatever you're going to say. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, the way we worked it out was um, he just wants 15000 and he's willing to own or finance the rest of it. Up to 100 grand. I love it. Do you have a nice, he's older. Did you enlarge your contracts to 16 point font? <laughs> you know what? That's, thank you. I didn't even think about that. Small, okay. And is your, are you using a board of realtors type contract or are you using a very, uh, a good club diamond, simplistic. large font, simple three page? It's exactly what it is. Very simplistic. Yeah, use a simple contract. Um, is he the only person on title on deed? He's the only one. Okay, great. Um, beautiful. Get right to it. Maybe bring him a little gift when you get there. To, oh, uh, I don't know about that because I, I, I don't know. I'll think about that. Someone, let me tell, let's go back to the psychology. Listen, I have, uh, I work with some of the largest real estate. I work with a ver the largest commercial real estate company in the world. Okay. And one of the things we came and it's, they have to see CEO CFOs in lower okay. Manhattan, New York city, raw meat eating very competitive and we came up with an idea so you guys on periscope this is a billion dollar this is a really good idea when it's raining they bring brand new little tote umbrellas to the ceo and they say hey mr mr nickel it's raining outside and i've been wanting uh, and i'd like to just give you a little gift and uh if you have a few minutes i'd like to introduce myself and i have a few ideas that might save you money or make you some more money now i gave you a gift what's what's going on if you're a properly raised person and not everybody this isn't foolproof but if I give you a gift of even a little token a nice little thing what's going on it what, what's the word I'm looking for reciprocity beautiful god you're smart reciprocity and you folks who are listening right now reciprocity you do a solid for somebody you give them a small gift even a little Starbucks gift card a free book why do you think I give away free books all day long to people that's what I do you know yeah yeah, you Man, go. I, Why I you can't sell your I'm, house? I'm in business with Ryan now. So if somebody wants your book, free book, what do I have to do, by the way? It's TroubleSellingYourHouse.com. Wait, you mean kissing ass? I don't know if I mean kissing ass. I mean reciprocity. Um, Dude, it works. The people that get this, like in my business, if I give them a book and, and they've already struggled selling their house, I'm now the expert, but you have given them something they want to give back to me. If somebody does something nice for me. Okay, my wife has a problem with the car. It breaks down. She calls up the dealership where we lease our car. They immediately send a tow truck, okay, and the salesman I work with picks up my wife and daughter by the highway and brings them back, gets them lunch, and takes care of them. You mean I'm not going to keep leasing a car oh. from that guy? And if that isn't kissing ass, my friend who said that, that is smart salesmanship. Kissing ass is transparent and it's pandering. Okay, that's the obvious old school type of selling. I'm talking about being a great thespian, a great actor, understanding the psychology of the other person. When you do something nice for somebody, most people will believe, as Ryan said, in reciprocity. Okay, and when you have reciprocity, oh my gosh, you're in the kill zone. You know, he was talking about my daughter yesterday because he could hear her in the background. He's just like, oh, my gosh, she sounds so sweet. I just, I'll bring my family photo in a little, little, like, little frame and say, hey, this is my here's a picture of my family. Yeah. He's I, lonely. The poor guy's a hoarder. He told me, too. He's like, I'm embarrassed for you to see my house because I do not get rid of anything. Yeah, just call him. Listen, you're a hobbyist. You're a collector. Why throw out nice things? You probably can put it on eBay and make a fortune. Maybe I can help you with that after we do this He's deal. He's a 1967 Buick. Have you, yeah, oh, my gosh. I'll take it. Only 13,000 miles. Oh, God, buy it. <laughs> Take care of it right now. In fact, have him call up, uh, and I have to go in 30 seconds. Uh, have him call up Dyer. Uh, he's Mr. Amazon.com. And um, Dyer uh, will, he'll, he'll, man, he'll take that well, whole house right probably. Yeah, I will do that. <laughs> there might be some more money there, a business there. There might be. Uh, there might be the original Macintosh computer in a, in a wooden box, which one guy bought. A couple of years ago, I read his book. It's worth three hundred thousand dollars now. The original Mac that was built in a wooden box, and they made like a couple hundred of them and sold them. And if you can find what most people don't know what they are in a garage, they're just a cheap wooden box with a little circuitry in them and stuff like that. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. I was really tough on you too, and you held up. You're made of good stuff, man. 
uh, let us know. Let's do another Periscope later and find out about your deal and how much you made and what happened, okay? For sure, definitely. That was cool, man. You see, you hung in there and it worked. This time. Oh, tenacity. Nice going, guy. Yeah. Thank have you. A, have a good day. You too, Claude. Thank you.